All right, good morning. Hey, I wanted to take a look at the Stella Lyra rotator. We're in a Bortle 4 area, and I'm hoping to get some, some fairly dark sky shots this evening. We'll see if it works out, and then hoping to have some uh, good opportunities and clear skies for a night of uh, imaging in a, a Bortle 1 or 2 area up in the Sedona. So we'll see if that works out. But today I wanted to talk about the Stella Lyra rotator and getting it installed on my telescope here. And uh, we'll take a look at that and I'll give you my thoughts on it. So if that sounds good, stick around and uh, we will get into that in just a moment. My name is Doug and this is Astro AF. So this is the Stella Lyra rotator. It's really nice. It's well built. It has a nice graduated scale on it and 360 degrees. It feels really nice. It's not too easy to move around, but it is still nice and snug. It just has a real good feel to it. It is all metal. This one happens to be a uh, 54 millimeter. Um, male threads and female threads. It has a, a nice knurled knob for loosening and even when it's loose it's still I have to there's quite a bit of resistance there so you know without being on the scope and then it has a nice scale like I said it's easy to read. So anyway let's get this put on the scope. So the first thing that I needed to do was remove this compression ring that's on here. And I'll tell you what, this was so tight, I had to use the band wrench. And I, like I've said before, this is the, the most valuable piece of astrophotography gear. I definitely recommend that you pick one up. But then this compression ring here simply screws off my focuser tube assembly and we'll reserve that because I'm going to continue to use it and then we will screw the Stella Lyra rotator in, in its place. Now one thing, and I've actually reached out to First Light Optics on, is when this is fully tightened, the orientation of zero degrees is down here about the five o'clock position. And I do see that there are some set screws here that are on the scale plate. And I'm wondering if I'm able to um, loosen those, if this will rotate so that I can change the orientation. but Sadly, this piece did not come with any type of instructions or drawings or anything, and I didn't want to re uh, unscrew these set screws um, without exactly knowing what they do. So I reached out to First Light Optics, and I'm waiting to hear back from them. But for now, this will work fine. That being installed on the focuser tube, then I can just take my compression ring and the reason that I want to use this compression ring, I'll show you here in just a moment. And with that tightened on there, then I can let me remove the dust cover here. And then the reason that I want to use that compression ring is because my Potec field flattener, this has expanding O-rings on it. It doesn't, uh, although if it had the right inside thread adapter on here, I could screw this in. But the way that this is designed is to sit inside and then you tighten this ring up here and that causes these gaskets to expand and tighten within and what it does is it centers 
the field flattener into the opening of the, uh, of the compression ring here. So if I slide that in, then I can tighten up this compression ring. or tighten up the compression bands, I guess they might call them, or expansion bands. And that is securely fit inside my compression ring now. And then I can tighten this up for just an extra sense of stability and security. And this has worked out really well for me. Um, so far, I haven't had any stability issues, any sagging or anything like that. And then as far as rotating is concerned, you can simply undo that knurled thumb screw and rotate the whole camera assembly. And so that works really good. My telescope has a rotator built into it here, and I can rotate at this point as well. But as you can probably see, I have a clearance problem with my mounting plate and so if I rotate to you know I can only rotate about I think it's like 30 degrees or so in either direction before I have interference but I do have that you know uh, uh, available to use if I want for that a little bit but I shouldn't have need to with the uh, with the Stella Lyra rotator so hopefully I can find out a solution um, and it's just unloosening these, um, or loosening these set screws so that I can rotate the, the scale. And I think that's probably the way that it works, but I will check that out. All right, so that's the Stella Lyra field rotator, and I hope you enjoyed that. It's, it's real simple. It was easy to install. It was harder to get my compression ring off from the, you know, from the factory installation of that, just because it was so tight. Uh, that was the hardest part of, of this little project. But um, anyway, I hope you found that useful. If you're thinking about a rotator, um, you might want to look into the uh, Stella Lyra. It, uh, for me, was the least expensive, looked to be the best built, and it is really well built uh, rotator uh, that was all metal and had the, uh, the scale um, printed in it on the ring you know, for degrees, and that was important to me. So, um, and I think it was, uh, uh, it's superior to anything else in its price range. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please leave a like. And if I have earned your subscription, please hit that subscribe button. My name is Doug, and this is Astro AF.